Okay, students, we're starting chapter two today. So we are gonna do chapter two, lesson one. This chapter is um, gonna be working with fractions and decimals. So this lesson is called Multiplying Fractions. You should be on page 56, so pause the video and get there if needed. We're gonna start out with our learning target. So our learning target today is gonna to say, I can multiply fractions, nice and short. There's gonna be a lot of different multiplication strategies here. We're gonna do fractions by fractions. We're gonna multiply fractions by mixed numbers. And we're gonna multiply mixed numbers by other mixed numbers as well. So a little bit of vocabulary um, at the top of page 56. So really, what do we do when we're multiplying fractions? We're gonna write those steps down. So first thing we're gonna do is take a look at the numerators and we're gonna multiply the numerators. Next thing we'll do is take a look at the denominators and we will multiply the denominators. So when we multiply fractions, we don't actually have to have a common denominator. We just basically multiply straight across. The last thing we need to make sure to do, and we could also do this not necessarily at the end of the problem, you could actually do some simplifying in the middle of the problem, is to make sure that your answer is simplified. And we will look at how to do that today. Um, the other thing I want to add up here next to multiplying fractions and parentheses is you're going to see the word of come up quite a bit today. Um, so in a word problem, if you see the word of, that of actually stands for multiplication, excuse me, most of the time. So when we see that word of, we're going to multiply our fractions. So when I multiply the numerators and denominators and then simplify, this is something how it could look. So let's say I have three sevenths and I multiply that by one half. The way that I would do that is just, first of all, take my numerators and multiply them. So three times one is three. Then take my denominators and multiply those. Seven times two is 14. And then I would go to step three, which is making sure that I can simplify or not simplify depending on prime numbers. Three is a prime number, so three cannot be divided by anything else besides itself and one. Three cannot go into 14, so three fourteenths would be our final answer. So that's a little quick example there. We're gonna get to our official examples next and we have quite a few examples for this lesson so we want to make sure to leave a lot of space try and write small if you can or use a couple different pages so we're going to start out with example one on page 56. so this one just says multiplying fractions find one fifth times one third so we're going to be multiplying one fifth times one third it's really nice when the top two numbers are ones it makes pretty simple multiplication as well as simplifying so one times one on the top would give us one. Five times three on the bottom would give us 15. And there's no way we can simplify that any farther. One fifteenth would be our final answer. Moving on to example two, getting a little bit more complicating. Not terrible though. For example two, still on page 56. These are multiplying fractions with common factors. So what you're gonna find here is that we're gonna to try to simplify these before we do any multiplication. So the question they're asking us is find 8 ninths times 3 fourths. So we have 8 ninths times 3 fourths. So what we're gonna do here is take a look at the top numbers versus the bottom numbers and see if we can connect some of them together that have the same factors. For example, if I take a look at this eight and this four, these are one from the top and one from the bottom. I'm gonna ask myself, is there anything that can go into eight that can also go into four? And there is. You can actually divide both of these by four. So if I divide the four by four, that would give me one. And if I divide the eight by four, that would give me two. 
So I have just simplified the 8 and the 4 before I did any multiplication. Now if I look at the 3 and the 9, I can do the same thing. 3 can go into 3 one time, and 3 can go into 9 three times. So we have just simplified the 3 and the 9 by dividing both of them by 3. So now what I have left is 2 thirds times 1 over 1. This makes it a lot easier to multiply. So if I take the numerator times the numerator, it would be 2 times 1, which would give me 2. If I take the denominator times the denominator, it would be 3 times 1, and that would give me 3. What happens when you do this kind of simplifying in the middle of the problem is that you don't have to simplify at the end. If we did not simplify those right away, we would end up with 8 times 3 is 24, and 9 times 4, which is 36. So we would have to simplify 24 over 36 down to 2 thirds. So simplifying in the middle of the problem kind of cuts out that extra step of simplifying at the end. So that is example two. Next, I'd like you to pause the video and try a couple of these on your own at the bottom of page 56. You have one through four. You decide how many you do, how many you don't do, um, but you probably want to try a couple just to practice in your student work section. Go ahead and pause now. Okay, number one, if you tried it out, is five twelfths. Number two is seven thirty seconds, so seven over thirty-two. Number three is two over seven, and number four is two over fifteen. All right, taking a look at page 57, we see example three sitting there. So we'll do that one in our teacher note section. This one looks like it's a real life situation, so we'll have to take out some important information and jot it down. So it looks like you have two thirds of a bag of flour. You use three fourths of the flour to make empanada dough. How much of the entire bag do you use to make the dough? So we have to take a look at the fractions we have and determine what math we're gonna do and then go ahead and do that math. So what we have here, if we take out the important information, is we're talking about dough, empanada dough to be exact, and they tell us that two-thirds of a bag of flour, you have two-thirds a bag of a flour, so we're going to write two-thirds of a bag of flour. That's how much we have. So we don't have a full bag to start with. We only have two thirds of a bag left. And then it says we use three fourths of that bag. So I'm going to put use three fourths of that bag. So what they want us to do is basically figure out what is three fourths of two thirds. Now I'm going to underline this word of and of because earlier in our notes up here we discussed that if we see this word of what that means is we're going to be multiplying. So we're going to take our two fractions in this problem and we're going to multiply them together. So we have two thirds of a bag of flour times three fourths of a bag of flour. Now just like in our example two we're going to pause here and figure out if we can simplify anything. So if we look at something on the top and something on the bottom, I see 2 and 4 would have a common factor. 2 can go into 2 and 2 can also go into 4. So I'm going to simplify 2. 2 can go into 2 one time. I'm going to simplify 4. 2 can go into 4 two times. So now I have a 1 here and a 2 here. Now if we look at these two numbers, 3 and 3, 3 can go into 3 one time. 3 can also go into this 3 one time. So instead of two-thirds times three-fourths, I now have one over one times one over two. That makes it a little easier to multiply. So numerator times numerator, one times one is one. Denominator times denominator, one times two is two. So my final answer here would be one half. So if I look back at my real life problem, I have to label this. We're looking for how much of the bag did we use. So one half of a bag. And that would be our final answer.
There is an on your own number five with right in the middle of page of 57. If you'd like to go ahead and try that real life application question out, you can go ahead and pause now. Okay, if you try it on number five, it says in example three, you use one fourth of the flour to make the dough. How much of the entire bag do you use to make the dough? So if you solve that one, we would have used one sixth of the entire bag. Next, we're going to focus on multiplying a fraction and a mixed number. So switching up a tiny bit, we don't just have two fractions now. Remember, a mixed number is where you have a whole number and a fraction sitting next to it. So example four. It says find one half times two and three fourths. So we're going to write out one half times two oops, and three fourths. So we have a fraction and a mixed number. So the first thing we have to do is convert this mixed number into an improper fraction. We can't do any multiplication until it's improper. So from our last lesson in chapter one, we know that we can take our whole number, multiply it by our denominator, and add the numerator to get this as an improper fraction. So I would go two times four plus the three. Two times four is eight plus three more is 11. So two and three fourths becomes 11 fourths. We always keep that denominator the same. So now what I have is one half times 11 fourths. So now let's go back to what we did in example two and three where we simplified on this step. We've got a one on the top. And so we don't wanna worry about simplifying the one. We've got an 11 on the top. If I look down below, there's nothing here that can be divided by 11 or no common factors they share. So really there's no simplifying we can do here. So we're gonna just put our equal sign and do our multiplication. One times 11 would be 11. Two times four would give us eight. So we have 11 eighths. Now what we need to do is take this improper fraction and switch it so that it's back into a mixed number. So we have to ask ourselves how many eights can go into 11? and eight can go into 11 one time with some leftovers. If I put eight into 11, we have to ask ourselves how many are left over. There are three leftovers between eight and 11 and our denominator stays the same. So our final answer to this would be one and three eighths. And that takes care of example four. We now can turn the page and take a look at page 58 where example five is sitting. And like I said, there are quite a few examples in this lesson. There's a lot of different ways we can multiply fractions. So for example five, looks like we're multiplying both mixed numbers. So multiplying mixed number times mixed number. I'm gonna write this one over here. It says find one and four fifths times three and two thirds. So we have one and four fifths times three and two thirds. So similar to what we did over here in example four, when we took this and changed it into an improper fraction, we have to do the same thing here in example five, but we have to change both of these into improper fractions. So to do that here, we would take the whole number one, times it by the denominator of five, and then add the numerator, which is four. One times five is five, plus four more is nine. So this turns into nine fifths. Next, over here, I have a whole number of three times the denominator of three, and then I add the numerator of two. Three times three is nine, plus two more is 11. So I have 11 over three. Remember, we keep that denominator that's originally up here, the exact same thing down below. Next, we're gonna take a look if we can simplify anything on this step. There's a nine on the top, and there's a three on the bottom. Three can go into nine and three can also go into three. So we're gonna cross this three out. Three can go into three one time and three can go into nine three times. Three and five don't have any common factors. 11 and five don't have any common factors. So we are done simplifying. So I'm gonna multiply numerator times numerator. Three times 11 is 33. Denominator times denominator, five times one is five. And I have 33 fifths. 
Lastly, I'm going to take this and figure out what it looks like into a mixed number again. We cannot end with an improper fraction. So how many times can 5 go into 33 and there's going to be leftovers? Well, 5 times 6 would give us 30. So I know that there's 6 whole times that 5 can go into 33. And that would be 30. So I have 3 leftovers out of 5. So my final answer would be 6 and 3 fifths. We have one example left, so we will take a look at example six right after you pause the video if you'd like to try some on your owns. So on your own, six, seven, eight, and nine, they are multiplying fractions with mixed numbers and mixed numbers by mixed numbers. So pause and maybe try a couple of those in your student work section. So if you tried them, number six is seven over 18. Number seven is one and five ninths. Number eight is four and one half. And number nine is the whole number 12. So we're on our very last example finally, example six. And still looking at page 58. This is another real life application. A city is resurfacing a basketball court. Find the area of the court. So for this one, we're talking about a basketball court. We're going to write that down. And in the picture in the book, you can see that the basketball court is in the shape of a rectangle. I'll draw it sideways here. And it looks to me like the dimensions on the side are 21 and 1 third. by 13 and 1 half. The question is asking for the area. And to remind you, the area of a rectangle is always the length times the width. So if I look at my rectangle, I'm going to take my 21 and 1 third and multiply it by my 13 and 1 half. So this is just a standard multiplication question again. So I have 21 and 1 third multiplied 13 and 1 half. So now it's basically back like example 5 where we have two mixed numbers. We're going to go ahead and change these into improper fractions. So whole number 21 times denominator 3 plus numerator 1. 21 times 3 plus the 1 is going to give us 64 and then we keep the 3 on the bottom. 64 thirds. Doing the same thing to 13 and a half, we have the whole number 13 times the denominator 2 plus the numerator 1. 13 times 2 plus 1 would give us 27 and we keep that denominator a 2. So this is now my problem, 64 thirds times 27 halves. Let's ask ourselves if we can do any simplifying here. Well, I see that 2 and 64 can both be divided by 2. So I'm going to cross out the 2. 2 can go into 2 one time. I can cross out 64 because 2 can go into 64. If you cut 64 in half, you have 32. Now if I look at the 3 and the 27, those can both be divided by 3. 3 can go into 3 one time. 3 can go into 27 nine times. There's nothing else I can simplify, so now it's time to multiply. I'm going to take 32 and times it by 9. When I do that, I end up with 288. Now I take my denominators, 1 times 1, and that leaves me with 1. Anytime you have a number on the top and a 1 on the bottom, the, the best way to simplify is just write the number on the top, because 288 over 1 is the same as the whole number 288. So the area of our basketball court is 288. Now remember that we, since it's a real life problem, we should probably label it. So in the picture, these measurements were in meters. So we label with meters and that little squared is part of our label. So the area of the basketball court, court is 288 meters squared. There is one final on your own if you have some time. It's number 10 at the very bottom of page 58. So pause the video if you want to do that one. Okay, 
So the answer to number 10 is 36 and 3 over 32 feet squared. Practice exercises start on 59. So 59 and 60, as well as 61, are going to be your practice exercises. But we will do those online as well. And that's your video for Chapter 1, Lesson 1.